If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello everybody, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with my baby, this is Evangeline, this is T1 Stellenforge Mystic, this is Bunny Rabbit Ears. And she's gonna help me with a deck tech of mine. This one's not a magic deck tech, no, this time... <laughs> this time, and she sees the she sees the cards. We have a Yu-Gi-Oh deck deck okay. because I play Yu-Gi-Oh too, and I want to show off my deck, a little homebrew of mine. Uh, it's not I'm not the first person to come up with this general idea, but I'm haven't seen anyone run it the way that I run it. So, without further ado, let's get started. First of all, and I'll let you have the cards after I pick them up. That'll be the distraction that she needs to get through this. Alright, or actually let me just give you, uh, that. You played with that last time. You played that on one of, played with that on one of our, I can't talk, other videos. There we go. So, you don't want to be on camera. You always want to be on camera. There you are! Alright, so first we have three Vanities Ruler. Okay, so the theme of this deck, I should start off. Uh, by saying, actually, I'll show you the first three monsters, and then you'll get the theme of the deck. Pretty much. Vanity's Ruler keeps my opponent from special summoning. Vanity's Fiend keeps both of us from special summoning. <laughs> and Archlord Christia keeps both of us from special summoning. Uh, so we're talking two special summons for the first and third, and one, or I should say, Monsters for Tribute. I'm a little distracted right now, forgive me. Um, except that we aren't actually going to be tributing for any of these. We're going to be cheating them into play. Not really cheating, but you get the idea. Oh my goodness. Are you going to play with... Smiley? I'm going to call him Smiley. Super generic, but I'm going to call him Smiley. Why? Smiley face. There we go. There we go. Oh my goodness, and you can play with these guys now if you want. You can play with the cards. Yeah, so, uh, I'm going to try to lock my opponent out of special summoning, which usually means that they can't play, especially if I went first and got the lockout early. Uh, Archlord Christ, yeah. Next three, Majesty's Fiend, and something I've been trying out, I don't know how good it is. One, Earthbound Immorta Immortal. Asla Piscu, something like that. Uh, it serves as a wall since my opponent can no longer attack me, and it puts a clock out since that monster can attack directly, and if they wipe the field, it still deals them damage. So sometimes they're just damned if they do, damned if they don't. Uh, now, how are we actually getting these guys into play? Uh, 13 monsters in the deck. Those are the 13. Well, we're using a card called Mausoleum of the Emperor. Now, this one allows us to pay life points. Uh, it's a field card, so both my opponent and I pay life points in order to uh, use them as substitute them as tribute. So, if it's a six-star monster, 1,000. If it's an eight-star monster. 2,000, and so on and so forth, and we get that. Well, I say and so on and so forth, it actually states that I can't use it for three or more. Uh, so only one or two tributes can be uh, substituted this way, but that's okay, that's all we need. All of our lock pieces, our uh, monsters that keep them from doing anything, are 1,000 or 2,000 life points, basically. Uh, next we have three terraforming, to find the mausoleum, of course. That's the only field card I have in the deck right now. Three Pot of Duality? Yeah! <laughs> Show off that, Kithian. Uh, three Pot of Duality. And that also helps us to find either Terraforming or Mausoleum. We don't do any special summoning in the deck ourselves, uh, so it hurts us not a bit. And it's super important that we find those. One, Upstart Hoban. Love you, Pat. For whatever it's worth, I agree with you about three upstarts and everything since day one, pretty much. Um, and those are the pieces that we use to 
find this, essentially it's a combo, I feel like I'm about to sneeze, so, sorry. Yeah, I'm about to sneeze, that's right. Can you say, Such a face, such a laugh. Uh, the combo of mausoleum and tribute monsters. Uh, now, our opponent can do this as well, they can pay life points to tribute, but unfortunately, well, for one thing, a lot of my opponents, maybe this is just the level of play, uh, haven't realized that they can do that. Another thing is that a lot of their, even if they can uh, tribute summon out something, for example, monarchs, they, you can do that with monarchs, but Mausoleum explicitly states that you don't treat that as being a tribute summon. They're not they're, they're normal summoned that way, but they're not tribute summoned if you pay the life points. So monarchs are just 2400 attack, 1000 defense beaters. Unfortunately, that may still be enough against, say, a vanity's feigned. A ruler, not so much. Uh, but there are still ways our opponent can beat us, even if they can't special summon. For example, uh, Raigeki is legal in the format, Dark Hole is legal in the format, Mirror Force, so on and so forth. Uh, we play our own control elements. Like, we have our one of Raigeki. Basically, we just went through the, uh, here, you can have this one, too. We just went through the limited and forbidden, li well, not forbidden, limited list, and picked out all the cards that we could take. So, two Dark Holes. What we're doing is we're stalling the game. We're controlling the field until we can get our monsters, assemble our combo and get our monsters out to lock the board down. Uh, three Mirror Force. Of course. <laughs> Torrential Tribute. Because we aren't doing anything until we get the combo out, this is pretty asymmetrical. It's pretty close to asymmetrical. And show off those pretty eyes. Come on. You got my hair in her mom's eyes. Yep. One bottomless trap hole. Try to get as much as you can with it. Compulsory for uh, XYZs and synchros because... You know, it's just a 1 for 0 if you're hitting a regular normal summon, but if you're hitting a tribute monster, synchro, or an XYZ, uh, or ritual, so on and so forth, this is straight up a 1 for 1, or more, depending on how much your opponent had to put into it. Oh my goodness! So, there's a reason why it's at 1. Uh, one Book of Moon, I'm not entirely sure about this. That may end up being another card that I'll show you, um, actually right now which is my body as a shield. Uh, so because our opponent can play destroy your monster effects, this is, our, this is one of our ways to try to stop that. Book of Moon is to stop our opponent. My body as a shield is to keep our dudes alive. Um, to that end, I actually have three dark bribes. Uh, same reason, although they're actually more important, they're more consequential uh, than my body as a shield, but instead of paying life points, I'm giving my opponent a card. But, because I'm playing this lockdown strategy, giving my opponent a card may not be such a bad thing, because I'm making dead so many cards in their deck. Uh, all of the you can't special summon plus Majesty's, Majesty's Fiend cards basically just say whatever they were doing, they're not doing anymore. Uh, and so giving them a card, odds are that card might not actually do anything, unless it's like Dark Hole, Bart Dark Bribe, Dark Hole. Okay, well, I was going to lose that anyway. Uh, and then three MSTs to deal with problem cards that are keeping us from, uh, you know, like, I guess, what, Wall of Revealing Light, Sword. Uh, if we want to make sure before we swing that we take out a Mirror Force or something like that, just MST for value. The one for one to clear the way, in other words. Um, and that's the main deck, as I let her play with all of my cards. Yeah. They're colorful, aren't they? So, I'm running two Dark Simorg. Uh, Dark Simorg. This guy has no issues being uh, normal summoned with Mausoleum. Uh, his prohibition for the opponent is that they can't set cards. Uh, you can, if you want to, try Anti-Spell Fragrance as well which requires them to set their spell and traps before they can activate them, which basically means they can't play spell or traps for the rest of the game. Uh, so two Dark Simorg, two Kaiser Colosseum, 
uh, this is our anti-swarm strategy. If we happen to be able to get out a monster on turn one with Kaiser Coliseum, uh, that should stop, the, you know, even if we just have Majesty's Feigned or uh, Immort Earthbound Immortal, Asla Pescu, even if we just have one of those, or Simorg, or whatever the case may be, they can't Synchro or XYZ at least the vast majority of the time because those require at least two monsters out. Kaiser Colosseum says no. Stops a lot of swarm strategies. You get the idea. <clears throat> uh, it's in the side deck, though, because it doesn't do anything unless we already have a monster out, and it's not as generally applicable as I would like for it to be. Uh, so next we have three Kuraz the Light Monarch. Now, he's not technically part of the Monarch archetype, despite the name, uh, for two reasons. Firstly, the Japanese name does not have the same character for Monarch. And secondly, like the regular, mo or unlike, I should say, the regular Monarchs, Kuraz does not have a tribute ability. It's just when it's normal or special summoned. Which means, unlike most of the Monarchs, <laughs> we can actually use that ability. And what it does is essentially just deals with problem cards on the field. Uh, if you can't deal with something that your opponent has out, then use Kuraz to take care of it. They will draw a card, but again, since we're a lockdown deck, we're often giving them cards that they can't use anyway. Can you get back up here? I want them to see your pretty little face. <gasps> Everyone, yeah, there you are. Wait, 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 wait. <gasps> Boots. Little, I may have overused that. Her little face. Uh, two lad, two light and darkness dragon. Uh, I don't like this card in the main board. I've been trying it in Obelisk Speed Summon, uh, what I called Mr. Obelisk's Neighborhood. Not so hot. It's easy enough for the opponent to get past. They may have to, you know, two for three themselves. Uh, excuse me, I'm not two for three, what am I saying? It's the number of cards I put into the Light and Darkness Dragon plus Light and Darkness Dragon, which in that deck was a three. And they'd use two cards, summon a monster, kill it, and then I'd lose the rest of my field. So, I play this against uh, very spell and trap heavy decks that can't go off, like spell books, for instance. They can't go off unless they can resolve a bunch. Um, I guess there are some other decks that may use that, some Exodia decks. They're trying to speed out uh, Exodia, and so their, their draw power, you take care of it. Uh, Magic Jammer, the two for one against yourself, because Raigeki and Dark Hole. That's basically it. It's just if we need more hate against control elements, Magic Jammer is there. And because our combo isn't as intensive, we can keep cards in our hand easily enough to pay for it. But it's just counter trap, discard a card, negate and destroy a spell. You know, easy enough. You want this one too? I'm just giving you all the cards. Uh, two more My Body as a Shield. You add in a Book of Moon to the side if you're putting in two My Body as a Shield in the main. Yeah, that's that's a silly art. I look at it. No, I guess silly isn't the right word. It's colorful, at least. It's colorful. Three Prohibition. To round it out. Three Prohibition. I am not well versed in the meta right now. Uh, probably not enough to play a card like Prohibition. But, you know, this just is there to stop combo decks that need a certain card. You know, or they can't win. Uh, and so it's easy enough to see why I would want something like this. Now in this deck especially, I want to go first. Uh, part of the reasoning for playing this kind of deck, for me anyway, is that I... There you go, you can have Prohibition. Uh, is that I, know, I see that you're getting an extra card if you go second, incentivizes a lot of people to go second, especially since you can't attack on the first turn anyway. And so I want to take advantage of that uh, in a similar way to how, uh, for example, in Magic the Gathering, the deck Manalist Dredge will play you for the, like, they'll roll the dice or rock, paper, scissors or whatever to see who goes first, but they're always going to say, no, I'm going second. Kind of making you wonder. I'll do the same thing, except I want to go first. They want to go second, like if they win the die roll and they go second, that's fine. If I win, I'll go first. We end up with the same outcome. Because, because, the reason behind that is I want to drop out my lock pieces first and then negate 
everything that they're doing from there on. If I'm going second, they might have a chance to get out a sweet combo first. Uh, you know, the <laughs> Mighty Morphing Power Rangers deck that gets out its ginormous XYZ and then the game is over. You know, I, stu I don't want stuff like that to happen. I want to stop them before they can stop me. Uh, and it isn't just the combo itself. These control elements, like Dark Bribe, like My Body as a Shield, like Dark Hole, Raigeki, Book of Moon, CEDs, that sort of thing, help to control the game until I can get to that point or keep my lock established once I'm there. And so, that's it for now, I guess. <laughs> Look at you. Scratching your little nose. Scratching your nose, you are. Alright. Well, we'll see you later. Can you say bye-bye? <laughs> yeah, that's her bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Say boots, boots. <laughs> Goodness. Can you say ah, spaghetti yo? What's another word? Poop. <laughs> She's giving you her caraz. She's giving you the card. All right. See ya. Hey there. Maybe some bloopers in the beginning. What are you doing? That's what she's doing. <sighs> yeah, a special little one. My only little one for now, at least. Let's see if we can get down. <gasps> okay, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, don't do that. Let's wait till that frown is gone. Wait till the frown is gone. You're not done yet. You gotta be done with your frowny face. And then we'll start. <laughs> don't you know, stop with your frown. Turn that frown upside down. I know how to fix that. <gasps> Boots. There we go. Big smile. Big smiles. Oh my goodness. And just in case that doesn't work. <gasps> SpaghettiOs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs>